because I'm on my way to Tampa right now to go put the carburetor on, get the carburetor tuned up, everything good with the gas and the air mixture, and uh, put the tires and the wheels back on along with the brake pads and the calipers and all that type of stuff, and we'll be good to go. So I'll see you guys in Tampa. time I see her it's like the first time uh, she looks so beautiful all right so we got the wheels and the brakes tires back on uh, see the new looking calipers through right through there and some brand new brake pads gonna put the hubs on in a little while and uh, right now just waiting for some gasket sealant so that we can put the carburetor back on Take manifolds and nothing goes in. And you know, there's a lot of rust in there. I thought about you know trying to clean it out, but I'm pretty sure once it starts running that heat, we'll take care of most of that stuff in there. We're gonna clean up on the top of the block, get a wire brush, maybe with some uh engine cleaner, degrees or some brake cleaner, clean this up a little bit, and then uh we're gonna put that carburetor back in there, get everything nice and cleaned up, and uh yeah. Got the car ready right, right here. Let's do it. It might be about the same size, yeah. Crazy. Now those might be closer. Yeah, these might be closer than this one. Yeah, we can make this one make a turn. Either that or you can order that original piece. It's got the turns in it. Yeah, you know what it's called. I'll go on the Echo's website and see if I can find it. But I do know that 
this is a vacuum line since it goes to that. And these are the T's. Hmm. Well, at least the carburetor is on there. following this vacuum line it goes to right under here. I don't even know what that's for. It might be for something on the inside of the car. Or maybe that's where it runs to the headlight switch. So that when you pull the switch, it goes from there all the way through there. Yeah. Yeah, called act act actuator. actuator. Yeah. And then both of them there, that's good. One thing needs to be done, probably get it rewired. But yeah, once we get it started up, I'm just gonna replace all the tiny things, maintenance wise. I put all new hoses, new thermostat, thermostat housing, clean it up, clean up the block. These are vacuum lines that go, that run right along there. You see it, now it's an actuator. Yeah, I see some of the Corvettes this year. Some of them have the, um, I think they call them the bullet style mirrors. Where it's yeah. like, the, I, I like these ones better. I saw one yeah, earlier thicker. Or yesterday. Yeah. I mean, it looked like from the ones on the racing car. Mm-hmm. Sit down like this. Yeah. I like those ones better than the chrome ones, though. Yeah, yeah that, that, that design is hard to beat. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an old design, but it still looks good to me. Oh, yeah. Because it goes with the door handles and the, yeah. and the wheels. All that. So it goes. All the gas we siphoned out of the tank. Old gas. Well, that's just some of it. Got the bucket over there. Place his back bumper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just saying, replace this stuff ain't expensive. I think I saw one of these for like a hundred and two hundred dollars. Yeah. Like that. Make sure it's lined up good. These tail lights are still good. These are basically brand oh, new. Oh, yeah, I replaced all of them. Like those lights are basically brand new. It's just that I bought this used. Mm -hmm. That's why I bled through and then uh, and was sitting out in the sun. Yeah. The sun and beat it up. Yeah, yeah. And this is rubber. And yeah. the oil from the rubber bleeds through. Mm -hmm. You can take it off and have it painted again, but it's, it's just good, a matter yeah. of yeah. what you want to do. It's already an expanded and cracked yeah. a little bit anyway. Yeah, it's so. already cracked. Mm -hmm. So if you find one in better shape. Front, I got for free. A front bumper? From a guy who had a, a red Corvette. Mm -hmm. Same year? Mm -hmm. Same body closer, style. Yeah. And he gave it to me and I had it painted. Mm -hmm. but, uh, this rear I bought from a Corvette shop that used to be uh, down the street from where the Mercedes Benz place is. Oh, okay. They gone right there. Years ago, they had a shop just like the one down there on uh, South Park. All right, after <laughs> exhausting myself putting that carburetor on my dad, a little bit of daylight we've got left. I'm gonna wash this thing up, let you guys see the before and after. So, if this is before, you can see how dirty it is. You know, it's got a lot of dirt marks on it, fingerprints from being washed. Need to get a replacement windshield, but for the most part, it is filthy. <laughs> so Gonna clean it up, get it looking a little bit better if we can. And the wheels, I still got the caps to the wheels on there. Uh, there's the bins, by the way. <laughs> SL, that you guys saw in that acceleration video. And like I said, I'm just gonna get it, I'm gonna get a new emblem, get this thing washed up. So here's your before.
I don't know if y'all can see it from this angle. It's super wet from over here. Look at that thing. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, yeah, that front bumper hanging out. That mustache hanging out. That's cool. This thing got that lip hanging in the front. This cool. It's my busted lip. What's going on now? Of course. You always come around here, man. This thing looking wet. You might want to get him. Huh? Oh, yeah, I can get it. I was trying to take it before and after. It's much better. shop that I had the carburetor rebuilt that they have the entire piece the front frame piece for about $500 so it's just a replacement it's a simple bolt-on it's a simple bolt-on piece you just bolt it on uh, to where this one is and you have a uh, new front end for the headlight uh, headlight placement now the headlight should work because the actuators were rebuilt recently I believe uh, within the last year or two a couple years ago so they should work correctly once we uh, get everything up and running, get the uh, vacuum lines connected to the actuators and everything like that. Because these cars basically operate a lot of things off of vacuum power. That's how these old carbureted engines work. But, like I was saying, I get on these little rants. Um, this car is looking pretty good after it's washed. Definitely use a good buffing and wax, and I'm sure you can see little tiny imperfections on the paint, like right around and right there. 
Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. Cool, it's pretty cool. I'm actually very curious to see this car after a good buff and all that stuff. You can see a hundred right there. The exhaust is pretty, uh, pretty rusty, but I'm gonna put a new exhaust on there. I'm thinking about um, getting some some uh, cherry bombs, glass packs, either that or some Mac and Flow 40 series. Those sound pretty good on these engines. I just wish that Corsa made an exhaust system for a Corvette this year, it's 1976. If Corsa made an exhaust system for this year's Corvette, I would definitely throw one of those on here. Corsa is the top exhaust system for any Corvette, in my opinion. I just really, really wish that they made a, made a system for my year. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna call to find out if they do. But um, yeah, another thing that I'm gonna do, I'm going to, um, once I get this car up and running how it should be, you know, 100, 100%, that's when I'm gonna start to uh, put a couple performance parts on it too. Try to, I'm gonna try to get some of this horsepower that GM rocked from this engine back in the day with uh, the emissions and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure if I put some more aggressive headers and exhaust on it, um, maybe uh, get a uh, higher voltage distributor on here, a higher power distributor on here. Um, you know that that'll probably open up this engine a lot better. Get a uh, get the carburetor tuned up a little bit differently, like that, or just get a bigger carburetor on it once I. Uh, get heads and headers and exhaust and all that thing here. But once I start doing all that, I might look into putting a different cam, lifter, stuff like that. So I'm going to try to unleash this beast power that Chevy robbed from it back in the day. This is the L82, like I said. So, uh, yeah, guys, just stay tuned. Stay tuned. I need to put those, uh, caps back on the wheels so that the fronts can match the backs and I love this car man I cannot wait to get it back on the road like I said you see the brake calipers in there oh, I just had them redone but you can see a little bit of baby rush trying to get on there That's cool. yeah, I'm gonna put the caps back on here and, uh, that's it for this project. Got the carburetor back on for the most part. I just need to uh, wait the full 24 hours before starting the car up because of the gasket sealant that I put on the um, carburetor gasket that goes on top of the intake manifold. So it says it usually takes like a couple of hours for it to dry, but they said after 24 hours it's you know completely 100% cured. So. I'm gonna wait the 24, 24 hours before I try to start this car before I let any gas run through that gasket. And um, that should be it. See how it starts up. You guys can hear the first startup of this car. And it'll be the first startup in about, I say about, um, maybe like five or six months, I would say. Like five or six months. It's been that long. And. Of course, I get this hood realigned. That's why I never close the hood completely. I can't close the hood. I can sn I can snap it onto the fasteners, the hood fasteners. But I don't want to do that because, as you can see, this hood is not lined up properly. You see, it's got it's protruding up from right here. It should be deep down in there. Like this side is pretty good. You see how that side is flush? That side's pretty flush with the body throughout the line pretty much all the way up here and it starts to get off track right about in the middle here so basically it needs to be pulled this way and that side needs to have the hinges pushed down a little bit it's not that hard to do it at all it's just a two-man job because one needs to hold the hood up while the other one fastens and tightens the uh the bolts down there on the the uh hinges that hold this hood up so let me do that soon so i can actually close the hood and it look much much better and i'm thinking about putting it i'm thinking about putting an aftermarket an aftermarket hood on this thing. I like some of the uh, some of the different hoods. Like I've seen one called the Stinger hood, and it's like uh, almost reminds me of the uh, the 427 Corvettes that came out, like the uh, 60s Stingrays, where they had a little intake, little opening right here in the front. It was like a little pointy, 
thing right there, but yeah. You guys just wait. Like I said there's the SL. As you guys saw good pools in Mexico, of course. That was in Mexico where we did those pools. And get it twisted. That's the SL. I don't know if you guys ever got to see a cool walk around the SL. And as you can see in the front, this piece of the grill broke off. This is notorious for Mercedes. Notorious. These things always break off. They get brittle. They get uh, cheap. I mean, they get uh, weak and brittle because of the sun. And down here in Florida, I'm sure you guys know that down here in Florida, the sun gets pretty aggressive, <laughs> pretty absurd. So I can see a crack in this one. It's ready to, this one's split right here. Ready to break off too. But just listen to that. See how cheap that sounds? Cheapest plastic you can get. And Mercedes is putting this on their cars. I don't understand it. You get an expensive car like Mercedes, you expect, you know, quality material, but whatever. And it's like $1,000 to replace that. I looked up the part. Um, it's like $850 or $900 before tax, so you might as well say $1,000 plus installation. So I don't believe it's worth that much for a cheap plastic part that's just going to break off again. But it takes the look away from the car and it um, doesn't look as good. Doesn't make it ugly, but nobody wants to be able to drive around like that. See the uh, red calipers on the front? Mosquitoes killing me right now, man. Florida got even mosquitoes like dogs out here. I heard Texas got them worse than us, though. <laughs> Texas. Speaking of Texas, shout out to um, the Corvette Ben. I've been watching his videos a lot on his channel on the Corvettes that he's working on, and I get a lot of my knowledge and information from him. He's been helping me um, do a lot of things with this Corvette. So, like I said, shout out to him, the Corvette Ben. You do some really great work and I enjoy watching your videos, brother. And uh, if you're ever in the Florida area, you hit me up so you can come help me get this thing up and going good, man. Back to everyday drivability. That's the story on the vet for now. And um, on my next day off, Try to get some more stuff done to it. Definitely get that first start up and uh, change the oil, um, change the coolant fluid, make sure everything's good, make sure there's no leaks from the freeze plug and all that type of stuff, make sure the radiator's good. And the radiator was uh, rebuilt a couple years ago, it should be good. And change all the um, change all the rubber hoses under there for fresh ones. And you gotta bleed the brakes, cause I still didn't bleed the brakes yet. I put the calipers back on the in the. Um, all the pieces that you saw I had to put on. And those are back on, new brake pads, brake calipers are rebuilt, brake discs got resurfaced, got turned to uh, clean the surface off. So the brakes are good to go, we just need to bleed them. And uh, bleed them, put new brake fluid in. This car be good to go. I mean, for the most part it drives. My dad was just driving it, I'm gonna say like a, like a year or two ago. But since then it's just been sitting. And now that I'm taking this project head on, this is, you know, technically my car. I'm ready to get this thing up and running so I can drive much of the car. Coming soon, guys. Take this thing mini to a whole bunch of car shows. Let you see all the trophies I win. Once I start putting performance parts on it, if anybody wants that smoke, you come get it for free for the free 99. I'm selling free smoke for the free 99. Just let me know. That's right, I said free 99. And like I said, that's the story on the that's the story on the Stingray for now. And um. Like I said, I just can't wait to get, I just can't wait for it to all be done. So I can have some fun with this thing. You guys can see the whole process get done. You can have some fun with it, with me too. So that's pretty much the story of the vet for now. I guess that's it. Until next time, signing off. See you guys next time.